Howdy, I'm David Wilson. This is for Cavs 320, and I'll be doing a short review of Colin Turnbull's 1962 memoir, The Forest People. This book is a very well-written account of time spent among a tribe of hunter-gatherers, <clears throat> the Bamabuti people. It is written by an anthropologist trying to explain the ways of a people who are very different from us as Westerners. <clears throat> However, it is not written as a scientific expose, but rather as an intimate account of time spent amongst friends. During this account, you come to realize that the simple beauty and elegance of the tribe's existence is admirable and very similar to our own lives. During his time with the tribe, the author attempts to answer several very interesting questions about the forest outdwelling people. The first is why do the Bamabuti avoid modern agriculture techniques so fervently? The second, the pygmies have been exposed to modern technologies, why do they refuse to accept modern tools and lifestyles? The third, researchers have noticed that the similarities between prehistoric man and the pygmies' lifestyles, but how similar are they really? The first question was quite easy, quite easy to answer quickly. Farming and livestock domestication became mankind's primary source of food roughly 10,000 years ago. Modern societies simply could not exist without farming techniques to feed their people. However, the Bamabuti people live in the jungle and the soil is not suitable for farming. The neighboring Bantu villagers actually believe that the pygmies curse the Aturi forest, forest ground so crops cannot grow there. In addition to the soil's infertility, vast sections of dense jungle must be cleared to make planting possible. The Bamabuti see the jungle as their provider god and would never dare to insult the jungle in such a way. Instead, the tribesmen are content to hunt and forage for everything they need, as the forest can provide everything. <clears throat> the second question was also quite easily answered. After absor uh, observing the ways of the tribe, the author was able to deduce the reason for the reluctance to use modern tools. <clears throat> and it simply stemmed from the fact that the forest provides everything they need. The forest did not provide the tools, so they were not fit for use. As previously mentioned, the Bamabuti people believe the forest is their god and is the source of the earth's bounty. Disrespecting the forest could lead to this bounty subsiding, leaving the tribe homeless and starving. For this reason, the tribe always respects the power and generosity of the forest. The third objective, to identify the tribe's similarity to prehistoric man, was somewhat more difficult to flesh out. The tribe does share many similarities with prehistoric man. The <clears throat> prehistoric tribes were also hunter-gatherers and living in small bands with very close relationships with the surrounding environment. However, the, where the two groups differ is more important to the author. The tribes have evolved much and in fact are continuously evolving as all humans do. So any similarities between the modern, the modern Bamabuti people and prehistoric man would not be scientifically relevant. <clears throat> Another noticeable difference is the aspect of choice. Our prehistoric forebears had no choice about the types of lives they made for themselves. The technology simply did not exist. However, the Bamabuti tribe is well aware of the modern world, and they choose as a people to not be involved with it, opting instead for their simple forest existence over the modern cityscapes and complexities of daily life. The forest provides all that they need, if only they know where to look. How can modern life possibly beat that? This book is a very well-written account of time spent among a tribe of hunter-gatherers, <clears throat> the Bamabuti people. It is written by an anthropologist trying to explain the ways of a people who are very different from us as Westerners. <clears throat> However, it is not written as a scientific expose, but rather as an intimate account of time spent amongst friends. During this account, you come to realize that the simple beauty and elegance of the tribe's existence is admirable and very similar to our own lives.
For more information on where you can purchase this book, please check out the following resources. I highly recommend reading this memoir on time spent <clears throat> relearning the roots of humanity. Once again, I'm David Wilson. Thank you for watching this review of Colin Turnbull's The Forest People.